So we are delighted to say we've been joined by Blues head coach Pep Clitet and of head of communications. Um, part of our sort of weekly catch-ups really, but um, Pep, great to see you, great to hear from you. How's things back home? Yeah, great to see you as well. Um, very, very good, you know. I was, you know, I was in England for a month on my own and and um, I managed to, to get back down here for a couple of weeks till the end of this week. And, and it's great, it's great to be part of the family, to make sure that um, everyone is all right and, and everyone is keeping safe. And of course, uh, uh, despite the, the problems that we're all having, uh, it's good that you can be surrounded with the, with the ones that you love and, 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 and spend time with them. Uh, but of course, always in the back of your mind is always uh, this mentality to try to, to get back to, to, to work and, and to get back to football. But of course, situation now, you, know, just not, you just need to try to make the best out of it, really. Like you say, you've spent some time here. You're now back at home in your hometown, the outskirts of Barcelona. What's the situation like there in terms of the lockdown? How does that compare to what's happening here in the UK? Uh, it's, a, it's far more strict than in the UK because you're not allowed to go outside to exercise. You're only allowed to go outside to, to go buy some groceries or, or anything that you need. And of course, most of the shops are closed. Uh, they're going to be opening now some of them end of the week. And since Sunday, since last Sunday, you are allowed to to go out with your kit on a one one kilometer radius of of your place. So you are allowed to to have a walk, have a stroll with a, with the little ones. Um, apart from that, everything is on on strict lockdown. Um, you are allowed to work if you can work from home, but that has only happened for almost two weeks before no one was allowed to go to work, only uh, essential services. And I can say that thanks to all these measures, despite the economy took a hit, uh, Spain has managed to invert the, the curve and, and the cases are now all under control and, and all the deaths have been coming down, but this is a battle, just a small battle and, and still a long war in front of us. And I'm happy that, especially in my hometown, which was uh, under severe lockdown uh, a little bit earlier, they expected that 80% of the population here uh, got infected at some point. So we just kind of proved that here in my area, it's been developed a little bit, uh, herd immunity, but of course this is a lot of speculation because there's not enough tests. Even though Spain are doing a lot of tests, uh, it's not available for, for most of the people yet. Uh, but that's how the situation is. I think Spain and most of Europe is possibly a couple of weeks ahead of the, of the UK. And still it feels like it's a long way to go. So the government here in Spain, they said that they have a plan, a four-phase plan for the next weeks, um, uh, which will see people getting back to to an, a normality that will never be a normality as well as before. But everything keeps locked for a couple more weeks and then slowly we will be able to go out and exercise from Sunday and then, and then for a couple of weeks and then slowly uh, shops will start to open but with very limited um, amount of people that can go in. And eventually then all hotels will open end of May and then into June they will open uh, most of the shops and the the restaurants and bars that they have a terrace service and no one will be allowed to go inside the restaurant until a bit later. So it looks like until July, uh, we'll not be able to, to be quite as the situation as we were before, but still we feel that it will never be the same situation possibly until a vaccine is, is ready. So, uh, Who's been more difficult to manage, Pep? A team of first team professionals or the little two that you've got there at home with you? Well, it's been tough. It's been tough with these two, and uh, but it's it's nice and 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 great to to be with them. And and you see, they are, they do understand it. My my little one is three, and he understands it. He, he thinks that there's something outside in the street that we cannot go out. It gets us sick, mm-hmm. and um, but they they are good, you know. Uh, luckily for us, we live in a 
in a neighborhood that um, allow us to have a, a nice little walk and 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 allow us to be outside a little bit more. Uh, but but for them, it's great, you know, to have the whole family together. I mean, they're they're doing the best out of it, and then they're causing a nightmare. They don't let you work as much as you want to, but but it's it's nice as well because normally in our line of of work, we we normally don't have that much time for, for them. So it's great as well. That's a positive out of it. And Tats, as we well know, there was a bit of a premature celebration of a birthday this week by a number of our fans. <laughs> Pe- Pep, a, a big happy 43rd birthday this week, which was on Tuesday, not Monday. Was you aware that there was quite a lot of birthday celebration and well wishes coming in on Monday, which was a day too early? Uh I had two birthdays in reality, one on Monday, one on Tuesday. Um, yeah, exactly. My birthday was on Tuesday, but I realized there was, had to be something going on on social media or something because uh, I, I started to get messages and texts from Roy, for example, was the first one. And uh, so oh, I'll take it for Tuesday. Yeah, possibly it was a, a mistake. Maybe, I don't know, on the web page they said it, they, they got it wrong, but it doesn't, it doesn't really matter, you know. They say it brings bad luck to say good happy birthday to someone earlier, but uh, nothing happened. So, and it was a great day as well. Well, as good as it can be in the current situation. So I appreciate, I appreciate that uh, the fans and everyone in, in Birmingham remembered it and, and sent me messages. You know, it's, I appreciate it a lot. Did the you... Queen has uh, two birthdays, Pep, so you know, you're not <laughs> alone. Royalty there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. So another can one I... in the club. Yeah, can I just ask what, what's the situation in Spain in regards... We're reading things that the, the players there in La Liga could be going back to training very soon. What's the situation there with the Spanish leagues? Um, because, yeah, uh, the government is controlling all the situation and the government allowed all professional sportsmen to start training again uh, on their own individually from this Saturday. Mm-hmm. And uh, so this could set up the conditions like like most of the sports to get back, not only football, but as well cycling and, and athletics and most of it. But the training must be individual, so not in, in groups and must be in a very controlled space. So there's, a, there's an outline. In it. And they can do that for until the foreseeable future because until the country doesn't get to the next phase and that's dictated by the country, then you cannot have gatherings of more than one sportsman. But... Um, it's a little bit of a problem at the minute with the professional football because the players uh, are starting to realize that there's, everyone wants to get back to football and wants to finish the games that they are, remain, they are remaining. But the players are starting to realize that the situation uh, is dangerous. It's, it's, there's always a risk. And, and we can prove here in Spain uh, that everything that, that every government has said, that this is a virus, that that the, the, the uh, will only really get you in problem if you have a, a, a serious condition before or you, you are an age, an age, a different age or, or, or you're older. This is, this is not true. Uh, this is a virus that affects everyone. It's a virus that can kill any age. Um, I've seen it myself. One of my best friends here he was 40, 47 and passed away on Monday and, and he was healthy. <laughs> You know, so that's a problem that the football players now are starting to realize that they want the conditions to be as safe as possible or safe, you know. And, um, and there's a little bit of problem in this, in this sense when it comes to the, to the restart of the trainings and the leagues. Mm. How do you see things playing out, Pep? Because like you say, it's so difficult. Everybody is clamoring for football to return. What would you like to see in the, the coming weeks and months before any football sort of returns to action? Uh, in my opinion, I've I always been very conservative in this matter because um, for all the information gathering that I could do and, and the research that I could do myself and, and, and to get as well informed as possible from the, from the doctors and the professionals regarding it, um, I'm very conservative. Uh, we will all love to football to be back. Uh, I understand that there's a, a lot of economical um, pressure on the side as well of the financial side of, of the professional game. Uh, I just would like to, to, to remember 
that health is very, very important. And sometimes we need to make sure that, that we understand what we are risking. I have no problem uh, in getting back to work. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it as well as all the players. Uh, but in my own personal values, uh, I want to make sure that our players are safe. Our players, the, their families, and, and I know I can trust all my players, they're, they're doing everything in their hands to, to make sure that, that they are safe. But I don't, I'm not responsible of, of anyone else. And every time that we compete, uh, we're competing against opposition. So what are they doing? Are they doing the right things or not? So are we having gatherings in the stadium? How are we going to do the game? So there's a lot of unknowns that need to be right because uh, I, I feel very uncomfortable uh, if, we, if we get to a situation that we are putting the, the health of the players and the staff uh, at risk. And, and I understand that there's a lot of pressure to make sure that the football gets back. But in my opinion, health is in first in this sense, you know, because we're not talking about catching a flu or catching a, uh, a cold. We're talking about something very different, something that the, the players can get into their families and they can get into anywhere else. And of course, they can catch it anywhere, right? But, but we need to make sure that the clubs understand and the league understands that they are responsible for the health and well-being of the players. And this risk can never be put onto the players. So the clubs and the league have to make sure that the situation is safe and, and then we get back to football results, no problem. Mm -hmm. Taking that opinion into account then, Pep, does this season have to finish with nine games remaining? Do we have to complete this campaign or not? I hope that we can complete we can complete the get the league mm. and i'm not an expert on the financial side of the clubs and on to on to fifa and wefa regulations and league regulations i don't know if, if they have a date they have to finish this i'm i'm it's not my i'm not thinking on on these matters what i'm thinking is that we need to make sure that as soon uh, the clubs they put everything in place to make sure that we can do that and save for the players and their families and the staff and everyone then we need to go out and play. And for that, it's very simple. And <clears throat> it's very simple. So we need tests. We need to test our players. We, don't, we cannot put players into, into risk, knowing that someone has not been tested. Uh, we cannot rely on situations like, well, he's been on his own for 14 days or things like that. It's, it's, mm -hmm. I don't think it's, it's appropriate, you know, for what we're talking about. So if we do things right, then we go back to football, we play the nine games. If, if the conditions are not right, and those games cannot be played, then they cannot be played. You know, it's, a, it's something that's not, no one's going to be at fault if the situation and the conditions uh, are not guaranteeing that the health is first, you know, I think. And it's the same, I, I believe it's the same on every line of work. You know, we have a lot of people that are risking their lives and, and, and those tests, those small tests that they are allowed now to be done or they're available to be done, possibly, of course, they need to go to the doctors first and to the, to the policemen, the people that are risking their life to, to make sure that we can be as safe as possible. But it's the same in our, in our case. So if we got to do it, if we got to play those nine games, everyone wants to play them, everyone, especially, especially the players who are desperate to get back into the pitch. But we need to make sure that we are guaranteeing the situations and conditions for them to be, uh, to be out of risk. Mm -hmm. That's how the, you do. Yeah, oh, sorry, Dale. I'm just going to ask him. Have you got a, a time scale to work to at all, Pep, whereby the players could be returning to training at, at some stage if everything yes. is okay? Yes. yes. At the minute, we are following the the government outlines, and and we have prepared uh, that the players can have some individual optional work if they want to like go to training ground on their own and we set up the work and, and they are there on their own. So they receive that on, on the phone, on the video. Um, they, can, they can do that from, from next week. And, and then based on the plan that we have at the minute with the information that we have at the minute, everything is set so we can start training the week after. So that will be mid mid-May uh, but of course a lot of things need to happen before we mm -hmm. need to know we need to know uh, what's the plan of the clubs uh, of all the clubs and the EFL to make sure that the, the environments are safe that that everyone 
if it's going to be tested, everyone or not tested, or what's the plan? So there's so so many things in the air at the minute, but we are preparing the plan to to try to be on the pitch on the in the training on the 18th, if that's required. You know, some testing before, and then on the 18th uh, we can start training. Uh, and again, I would like to thank now that I have the opportunity all the major work that our whole staff has done to to make sure that we got to this point because the players have been working under very difficult conditions on their own uh, at home in the same same situation as everyone else, and and the staff has done a massive work to make sure that they receive the right plannings, and not only from the physical side but as well from the medical side and from the nutritional side. So everyone has been working very hard in the club to make sure that we have we are in the situation of starting on the day that we set or that the league has set that is is when it's more recommended to to start that is the from the 16th of may onwards uh, so we are on this point at the same at the same time so we hope that uh, in the next week we know a little bit more and what's the plan of the government as well for for the whole country and and what's the procedure that clubs will follow to to make sure that our players and our staff and everyone um, is safe mm-hmm. Lots of talk about if the season does resume and it is safe to to continue playing, that the games could very well be behind closed doors. I know you've spoken before about the issue of football matches being played without supporters, but is it something that you'd welcome or is it something that you, you're not too sure would work? I think, in my opinion, if we need to play the remaining games of the, of the league behind closed doors, uh, in a situation that's got to be safe for the players who are playing and for the staff around and for everyone who's got to be, even though small numbers, it's got to be people possibly broadcasting the game and, and all the things. If it's safe for them and, and the stadiums are treating, treating with care and, and according to that, I think we should, um, we'll all love to, to play in front of our fans, but we, we have to understand that it's better to play those games no matter how because... Uh, it's a way to finish the competition. It's a way as well to get the football back and 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 to make sure that the 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 clubs they they, they fulfil their their compromises as well and and with the league and with themselves. So it's a it's a minor damage that we need to 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 take. But uh, on the other hand, we will be able to to finish the league. So I think that's possible. But again, it's going to be a massive effort from everyone to make sure that. The people don't gather together to watch the games together. You know that the people doesn't don't come to the stadiums outside. You know, and I understand that we'll all love to to give the support to to us and the players. But um, I think everyone now understands more that this is a a major situation, and and we need to do everything with a, with a lot of common sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if football does come back, it, it'll be a bit strange because you've had such a gap. And then you've got nine games left to go. How do you think those games will pan out? Because any teams that may have had some momentum will will surely will have lost that momentum. Yes, I think so. And and despite that we lost the last game at, at Reading, we were coming from a good run and beaten in, in a lot of games. And, and we kind of had that momentum as well. But I think the reality is that we don't know because no one has ever been in this situation before, yeah. really. So uh, it's got to be a, a major unknown for that, for everyone. It, it will it will feel more like starting a league possibly mm. than than finishing a league. But I'm sure the motivation of the of all the squads, all the players, got to be massive to 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 get back into the grass and, and back to getting getting play, playing football, especially if they know that the clubs and the league have, have put all their efforts to make sure that that situations are safe for, for everyone. So for the players, got to be like getting back into a normality, you know, and that's got to be very welcome. But of course, anything can happen. Possibly those clubs they they were having momentum, they'll have to, they'll be retested on those momentums. Those clubs that they are. In a, in a position that they have a little bit less to play for or those clubs that they are in a position they have a lot to play for, of course, that's got to be, that's got to be having an impact on those remaining games, absolutely. Mm. Mm. I just wanted to get your thoughts in, in terms of football in general and the summer transfer market. Do you think that the global pandemic will have any impact on players moving around between this season and next season? Possibly. Possibly because uh, we don't know yet um, because every, everyone was caught by surprise, especially the governments who are the ones that should be prepared for almost everything. You know, and, and 
uh, there's massive restrictions on, on traveling all over all over the world and and possibly well FIFA already said they've got to be tweaking the UEFA got to be tweaking the transfer windows uh, we don't know if we are going to finish this league and we don't know when are we going to start the next league so how this so I'm sure there's going to be a little bit of disruption but uh, this disruption will be possibly less than what we think because somehow it's going to the, the longer we are in this situation, the, and now I'm in Spain, which is possibly a couple of weeks ahead of, of, of England and Great Britain, uh, the situation here looks much better now or much under control. And, and people now look forward to a, 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 little bit, a little bit more of a normality. So the longer we are and well into the summer when we finish the leagues, if we, if we manage to finish the leagues and we're looking forward for the next season, uh, the uncertainty is going to be less, but of course, a little bit, it will be affected for sure. And Tats, from a media perspective, can you envisage something where supporters may be able to watch games from home if they're not allowed in stadiums? Yeah, I think that's got to happen really, isn't it? Um, and again, that will encourage people not to gather at stadiums, which I'm sure some people would like to do. We saw that in some of the Champions League games, I believe, before the, uh, the lockdown. But yeah, I, I'm sure, I know the EFL are talking to us clubs about how to provide that service, um, a live stream, uh, whereby whether it's free or certain individuals or season ticket holders, I'm not sure yet, but th there's definitely going to be some sort of scope there because I think as Pep says, we're all missing it, but obviously when we come back, it has to be done in the, in the right way and at the right time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Pep, from your point of view, how much are you missing the buzz of match day, being around the players and and being back amongst it a lot a lot and and especially now after more than a month um, mm -hmm. without being around the the football around the training pitch and um, I do miss it you know I think especially our players and and especially our Birmingham because I think um, this season we had so much unknowns in us the way we started and 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 the and how everyone had to pull together and things. We had a, a ups and downs. We had a, some fantastic football play. Sometimes our football could ha should have been better, you know. But I think one thing that we all did, all of us together as a club, is that we all the time we pulled in the same direction and we always tried to be better and try to improve and try to get better. And and now that's what I miss, you know. But I think I think the squad have managed to create a, a huge unity by themselves and and. And the 13 games, the, the, the run that we had now before we, we got into lockdown was um, a proof of it. And, and I saw <clears throat> a really good atmosphere in them. And that's, that's what you're missing. You know? and, and I saw a lot of, a lot of um, positive signs into the players. Now we were going to the matches because they had a lot of confidence in themselves and in the team and in each other. And that's exactly what I miss because this you feel it uh, on the match day especially, you know. So I, I miss it a lot, but don't worry, that will be back, that will come back. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, well, Pep, thank you ever so much for taking the time out from home. Enjoy the family time, stay safe and healthy and look forward to seeing you back in the country and, and back at the training ground very shortly. Thank you. Thank you very much. And let me use this time that I can speak to uh, from here to everyone, all our fans especially. Uh, thanks for all your effort to, 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 to try to be as safe as possible, you and your families, and uh, this will get over it, and football will be back, and now it's maybe a time to do it right, and, and make sure that, that we don't go one step forward and two steps back, and I would like to, to thank everyone, because everyone has been understanding the situation, and, and has been loving the club more for it, and, and they, we all live together, and, and I would love that. I would love everyone to be healthy and be back in the stadium as soon as, as possible. Thanks.